In the previous chapter, I talked about how important it is to control the amount of light that comes into the camera so that the picture isn't over or underexposed, and also how the shutter speed and aperture can affect the look of the pictures you take. Now let's find out how to take control of your exposure and choose the settings that will give you the results you want. As I noted earlier, all camera models are different, but yours probably has an exposure mode dial like this one with icons or letters representing different types of shooting situations. There's probably one that looks like a runner, another that looks like a head, and a mountain peak. The particular setting of this dial is what determines how your camera calculates the exposure and chooses the aperture and shutter speed. Let's look at the fully automatic setting first. On some cameras, this will be designated by the word auto, and on other cameras, you might simply see a green rectangle. With this setting, you give almost total control to the camera, not just for exposure, but also for just about every other manual setting. So if all you want to do is aim the camera and press the shutter button, auto is the best choice. But be aware that the camera can't tell if you're shooting fast-moving sports or distant mountain peaks, so it will rarely pick the aperture and shutter speed that will give you the best results. What the camera will choose is bland, middle-of-the-road, safe settings that usually will not be the best creative choice. Next, there are a number of specialized scene modes that automatically set the camera for shooting common subjects such as landscapes, portraits, and close-ups. Remember that I said the camera can't tell what you're shooting? Well, this is one way of telling the camera what you're shooting. For example, you could switch to the sports action mode if you're shooting high school sports. But I wouldn't suggest that. While the scene modes can make it easier for novice shooters to take better pictures of certain types of subjects, they aren't the best option for creative photography because they don't allow direct control over shutter speed and aperture. In my experience, with quite a few different brands and models of cameras, the scene modes rarely choose the same exposure settings that I would choose myself. For example, if I'm shooting sports, I usually want the largest f-stop and the fastest shutter speed I can get away with. But of all of the sports modes I've tried on various cameras, none of them will go to those extremes. I describe the scene modes as timid because they will only shift the camera's exposure settings a little bit one way or another. They don't take the shutter speed and aperture to the extreme ends of the range where I think great photography usually happens. I'm a big fan of using extreme exposure settings. I like very fast or very slow shutter speeds to control motion blur, or very large or very small apertures to control depth of field. That's how I think the best photos are taken. It's the middle settings, the one the camera will choose on its own, that don't result in stunning photos nearly as often. For example, if I'm shooting sports, then I want the fastest shutter speed the lighting will allow to freeze the action. But the camera won't always choose the fastest shutter speed in the sports mode. If I'm shooting portraits, then I want a very large aperture so that I get a shallow depth of field. But the camera usually won't choose the largest aperture in the portrait mode. And if I'm shooting landscapes, I'll put the camera on a tripod and choose a very small aperture so that I have the maximum depth of field. But the camera won't go to that extreme in the landscape mode. So to summarize, in my opinion, great pictures are taken at extreme exposure settings, and they must be chosen manually because the camera won't do it for you. But don't get worried. We'll see in a minute how easy it is to choose the aperture or shutter speed yourself. Another exposure mode you'll see on the dial is marked M, which stands for manual. Even though I'm not a big fan of relying too much on the automatic controls of your camera, going to fully manual exposure mode is too extreme even for me. In this mode, you have to constantly monitor the lighting on your subject and set the shutter speed and aperture yourself for every picture. Sometimes that level of control may be necessary, but for 99% of the rest of the time, manual mode can turn photography into a real chore. P, or programmed auto, is an advanced variation of auto exposure that allows you to have some influence over the particular aperture and shutter speed combination that the camera chooses, 
Plus, it lets you maintain manual control over most of the other camera settings, like white balance and metering mode. But it's still not the best choice. The two best exposure mode choices are aperture priority and shutter priority. These are the two I use 100% of the time. On some cameras, aperture priority may be designated by the letter A, but on other cameras, it will be labeled as AV, which stands for aperture value. On some cameras, shutter priority may be designated by the letter S, but on other cameras, it will be labeled as TV, which stands for time value. With these two modes, you can choose the exact shutter speed or aperture that you want, and then the camera will determine the other setting to ensure a proper exposure. For example, in shutter priority mode, if I decide that I want to shoot with a shutter speed of 1 1,000th, then the camera will automatically choose the best aperture to make sure the picture is properly exposed. Or in aperture priority mode, if I decide that I want to take a picture with the aperture set at f16, then the camera will automatically select the best shutter speed to go along with it. The advantage with these modes is that I get to choose an exact setting, either aperture or shutter speed, that is most important to me creatively. And then the camera automatically compensates for my choice. It's really the best of both worlds. I get creative control, but the camera helps me out to get the exposure right. Great photography is all about creative control and knowing when and how to choose certain settings yourself. For this photo, I put the camera on a tripod and chose a very slow shutter speed to get the look I wanted. But if I had left the camera on auto, this is what I would have gotten instead. Here's another example. I wanted a very shallow depth of field in order to separate the subject from the background. So I chose the maximum aperture of the lens, which was f2.8 in this case, and let the camera pick the best shutter speed. But once again, if I had just left the camera on auto, this is what I would have gotten instead. Aperture priority and shutter priority are so easy to use that they are the only exposure modes that I ever use, and I encourage you to experiment with using them yourself. But there's one thing to warn you about. Your choices for exposure settings are going to be limited by the amount of available light wherever you're shooting. For example, just because I might want to shoot at 1 500th of a second, that doesn't mean that the camera will be able to get a proper exposure with that setting. It may be too dark to allow a shutter speed that fast if the aperture of the lens can't be opened any further to let in more light. If that's the case, then the camera will give a warning or maybe even refuse to take the picture at all until I choose a slower shutter speed. Another option when it's too dark to shoot at a fast shutter speed is to raise the ISO and make the camera more sensitive to light. Remember, every time you double the ISO setting, the camera's sensitivity to light will double and therefore allow you to shoot at a faster shutter speed. The picture quality will suffer a little bit by increasing the ISO, but it's preferable to shooting with a shutter speed that was too slow to capture the image sharply. One way to judge your exposure is to play back the image on the LCD and see if the image is exposed properly. But in some situations, viewing images on the LCD can be difficult, such as in bright sunlight. Another and better method to judge exposure is to view the camera's histogram display. A histogram is a bar graph that depicts the tones of the image in a corresponding frame, often overlaying the image itself. An ideal histogram will have a measurable graph from left to right across the frame, with most of the peaks in the middle. If there's no tonal representation to the right of the graph, then the image is probably underexposed. And alternately, if there's no representation on the left, then the image is probably overexposed. Mastering the art of exposure is something that takes some practice. In many ways, it comes down to a certain amount of trial and error. Even the most experienced photographers will shoot several photos of the same subject with different settings to ensure that they'll get the one they like. The great thing about digital SLRs is that they make learning easy. You can take as many shots as you like at no cost and experiment all you want. There's just no substitute for getting out and trying new things.